Okay, today I'm going to show you basic use and care of a gasoline lantern, a Coleman lantern. And uh, the first thing you would do is put fuel in it. And uh, you take this cap off. And this cap has a screw in the center. That's what's referred to as a three-piece cap. And when you find those at garage sales or whatever, normally it needs a new seal. The seal on this is good. And you use a funnel in there. And then you just pour some gas in there. I already have gas in here. Now you can buy a plastic funnel at Walmart that works just as well. This has a filter in the bottom. And if you can find one of those at a garage sale or whatever, it's a nice thing to have. <clears throat> Put the cap back on once you have fuel in there. Now this particular lantern has a hole in the mantle. And if you run it with a hole in the mantle, if you light it and run it with a hole in the mantle, you'll get opposite from that hole, you'll get a burn mark on your globe. So we want to replace the globe, the mantle. And to do that, we take, that was the bale, we took the bale off and then take the vent off. This, this is porcelain. It's not painted, and it's called a vent. We take that off, then we take the globe off. Then we're going to remove that old mantle. Now, the old mantles are radioactive so you want to be careful with them. Uh, this one I'm just going to dump it over here. Now there's no debris or anything on there so I'm ready to put on a new mantle. You just tie it on to that ring that goes around the top. That's called the burner screen right there where the mantle goes on. And I'm going to tie this I'm going to wrap that through there several times. that and then I'm going to double knot it. Now I'm going to cut those strings off pretty close to the knot. It just looks cleaner that way. Somehow that one got messed up. <clears throat> I have another mantle here. This is a smaller mantle, but it'll work. <clears throat> So you see that in real life, I guess, what sometimes happens.
I use peerless mantles because those are better quality than the Coleman mantles. They'll last longer, they're tougher, they won't break as easy. <clears throat> now this time I'm not going to cut that knot quite as close. And we have a mantle on there. Now, <clears throat> you, the mantle needs to be burned in next. That's the next step. And you can do that with a match burning, starting to burn from the bottom. And the mantle will burn all the way up. I'm going to burn this in with a propane torch. And generally you want to do this outside. There was some residual gas in the generator, and that's what you saw flaming up. <clears throat> now the lantern is ready to light. We're going to let that cool down a little bit while we put this globe back on. That's the globe. And this is the vent. And you can see these two tabs on top and the holes in the side of the vent have to match up with those and that's kind of hard to see sometimes. I don't have the best lighting in here. And then the bail goes back in there. And then the vent nut. This is a vent nut. Now, <clears throat> one thing to keep in mind on these lanterns is that's a burning a fire in there that makes the heat. The heat from the fire causes the mantle to glow white, and that's what creates the light. So, anytime you're burning this lantern, this globe and the bottom of your frame rest and the vent gets extremely hot so if you're going to touch it you'll burn the skin right off your finger you got to keep that in mind when you're using a lantern uh, always pick it up by the bail or you can pick it up by the vent the valve and the bottom of the lantern like this that will not be hot. Now, <clears throat> we're going to pump this up. And sometimes you need to oil the, the pump cup in here. There's a little hole in here. You can feel that's not that's not pumping pressure right now and fanatics use 100% pure neat's foot oil but for today for the common household user I'm going to use 3 in 1 household oil and you can buy that new at the hardware uh, it's best to use the neat's foot oil there's some oil in there now. And I'm just working it around a little bit. There's a valve inside there. To pump this up, uh, that's locked shut now. To pump it, you have to open that a few turns. Now it's pumping air into the lantern. And 
and we're going to pump a little while until we feel a good amount of resistance when we're pumping the air. Now when I crack this valve open a little bit, at first I'll only hear air hissing out of the generator, but then eventually I'll hear some fuel gurgling in there, and I'll do that now. I hear fuel in there now, so it's ready to light. I'm going to take this match. And there's a lighting hole here at the back. I'm going to <clears throat> put the match in the hole lit and then turn that valve open a quarter turn. Now when, when this lights you're going to see flame shooting out of the top normally. Uh, you'll see a big flame and that flame burns until the generator is hot at which point the gas begins turning to vapor and it'll burn a smooth white light. <clears throat> To light this, I only open this a quarter turn, which allows air from the fount to mix with the gas. Now it's burning good, and I'm going to open that all the way, and that shuts off the air from the fount. That should have a stop on it. This valve should you should be able to open it all the way until you can't turn it anymore and then it's fully open and lit now this is lit so that as you can feel at the top it's putting out a lot of heat and if I was to touch this vent right now I would burn my finger you have to be careful around children or whatever uh, and you should never use them inside a tent because they can fall over and cause a start a fire. Uh, if you're burning them inside a house, they can put out some amounts of carbon monoxide, so you should always uh, crack a window open to provide fresh air. Uh, some people, the fumes will bother them and cause headaches and stuff, but normally, uh, most people, uh, the fumes won't bother them, <clears throat> especially if you open a window to provide fresh air. And that's pretty much all you need to know to use a Coleman lantern. There's a channel on YouTube called Lantern Lab that goes in depth into how to restore and rebuild lanterns. I'm just showing you basically how to light one and he goes into depth on how to take one that you found at a garage sale and make it work like new. So to turn it off all I have to do is shut this valve. That will burn for a little while until the gas is out of the generator and then it goes out and then you would let it cool down before you put it away. Another thing to keep in mind is where to store these. Uh, you should store them somewhere in your house where it's dry and the temperature doesn't vary a lot. 
if you leave them in the garage, never set them on a cement floor because the cement floor will hold moisture and it will rot the bottom right out of your lantern. Uh, also, if you store them in a garage or something, they're going to rust faster because of the temperature variation. As the air cools down in the evening, small amounts of humidity will condense on the steel and cause it to rust. And it'll also cause the nickel to corrode. Now this lantern is pretty much the same as a red Coleman 200A and the operation is the same as a green 220 or 228 lantern that's very common to find at garage sales. So uh, I hope you find the lantern and light it and have fun with it.